the bridge. You have to call the roll for us. Oh. Yeah, it was not here. You're right. Um, was there any specific order I need to go in? Or can I just call him? Just call him. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Uh, Mayor Reynolds? Present. Mr. Lowry? Here. And Mr. Shannon? Here. Can I, Mr. Lindsay, please forgive me? Vice Mayor. Um, we have six members present. So, so we're going to get our, in, our invocation tonight by Vice Mayor Bill Lindsay. Bill Lindsay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again, Father, in Jesus' name. We ask you to give us the wisdom and the guidance that we need to move this city forward and to take care of the city's business. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
that big project, the land bank. County Commissioner just today transferred the armory and fairgrounds to the land bank. And that's because the land bank, by legislation, has easier authority than, than local government to manage and dispose of property. That's what, that's what a land bank does, it handles the property. So uh, today we get one armory at the fairgrounds, and I will tell you, it will be demolished, and that property will be redeveloped into something that is uh, people that will be conducive to what goes on at the fair, whether it be a restaurant, you know, there's been rumors that a restaurant is at a hotel, but well, right now it's nothing that's going to be in the ground. It will be whatever we can attract. So um, that's what the land bank does. Um, applies for grants, looks for money. Uh, 
this year could be applied this year or applied in 2020? Uh, the CPG money come this year will be part of the
we were to push a developer your way, I don't know whether that would help our cause a little bit more than the average duck, but I guess it would, in my estimation, work the plan a little bit closer to completion. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Councilor Lowry. Would it be of interest to reach out to Mr. Dillon, who bought all the lots in Twin Creeks? I mean, I can. I already briefly talked to him months ago. He said he already, already, he's already got enough to worry about. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll revisit the conversation with him. But he's got Twin Creeks and dealing with and all that stuff. So. Okay. Councilor Hans. Mr. Rich, you have anything, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, thank you for coming so much. It was an informative session. I think that opened up a lot of our eyes for the next two years. Good. All in the time, those guys are eight or so. We're going to go to my office and not leave it out of my car. People don't leave it out of my car. Is that why you're in your car right now? I didn't bring it to the I wonder why I never got a car from you. I don't like it. I know. sell that we aren't going to get a dime 
Has there ever been any thought that due to the fact that this grass cutting and whatever abatements we have to do are technically a debt by the person that owns that property? Has there ever been a situation where somebody goes to court and tries to collect that debt? Not yet. But I will tell you all assessments by legislation are eliminated when we buy a property. Not to mention the fact that by legislation, state law, we do not pay property tax. Anything we own, property tax is erased. The Upper Valley Mall currently has no property tax on it. That was used as an incentive for purchasers to say, you have no tax from now to the end of the year. However, starting in January, you will get assessed. But we use it as an incentive. And the idea for a landowner is not to hold a piece of property because it hurts. It doesn't help. So I told you a happy story. There's the negative side of things. Now, assessments are tough. But the idea of the land bank is, is you take the community, the leaders, and what you're doing is working for them. You might lose the assessment, but they could possibly give the property back to you and you sell it. And then you try to recoup some of your funds. And the land bank can transfer property to a municipality without any issue. So there's ways to do things. It requires a lot of communication and a lot, and a lot of joint effort. But, you, but all assessments go away. We have to think of the assessments as if those assessments get quite high. We're never going to see that anyhow because that property is going to be defunct. And no one's going to buy it and it's going to get torn down. So I think it's the best way to do it. And we've seen that already. Can I have some clarification? Yes. What we were talking about is, yeah, of course, we're talking about the houses that are vacant. Let's say there's an occupied house. All right. And we go and we cut their grass. All right. We, you know, we do the bills like 385 bucks. We send that to every August to the county to put on the property tax. Have you ever known of a case that where instead of it goes on the property tax, it maybe goes on the utility bill? That is not. They refuse to give me a dollar. I've asked for it. 
is done, then we receive that twice a year. That's why we all pay our property taxes twice a year. After the assessments are all done, they determine how much money is collected. We get a check to an percent of the late fee. We take nothing away from the base foundation of, of funding, so it's the late fee, part of the late fee that we get. It, it, it's uh, somewhere between eighty and one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Put it right back in the work announcement. It goes towards no payroll. Council, anything else? All right, Mr. Adams, thank you so much for coming out. You're welcome. Very good. Anything, anything else? else? Not from council. So, thank you, Mr. Howell. Sure. Now, did you say you were going to give us one hundred twenty-five dollars for coming out here? I thought it was 200. Huh? I thought it was 200. No, I'll settle for 125 to be offered. You want to cash or check? Well, your check will probably bounce. You don't have any checks.
this is how it gets on the plane. Resume only. Yeah, I think I know what Linda's going to say about that. Okay. I'll get her on and I'll let you guys know as soon as she gets back. Fantastic. Okay. Any other comments from members of the public? Mrs. Manaman. Hi. We 
did ask him how much it cost at the demo house. He said, what he said, seven to ten thousand dollars. You know, so I don't know if they were going to try to sell that parcel for seven to ten. I don't know how. I, I don't know. I'm not. I can't speak on that behalf. Very valid point, and you're right. I mean, what's the point of buying it if the city's already taken care of it? You would not be able to use the property. You know, I mean, it would be fenced off. I mean, it, it would, we would have to take steps because now it's a liability. If we just say, go ahead and use it, the money you're paying for to get hurt. Now we're liable, so we would have to restrict that access in there. You know, but I, I've talked a lot, like I said, I don't want to repeat myself, but a lot of people who work with want bank cards. I mean, they truly do.
all we're doing by mowing it is we're trying to keep the rats out, for one. Uh, your fleas, ticks, whatever. In that, everything. Pardon? Skunks, raccoons. Right, skunks, raccoon out of. Uh, but there's no guarantee that if we spend ten thousand dollars mowing grass, that we're ever going to get it back. And that's ten thousand your tax dollars. We can go and try to put a lien against it, but there again, you've got to find out who owns it. You've got to check to see if Medicaid hadn't took it over yet. Or is it at a sheriff auction? So they're, they're, you're spending a lot of money to try to find out exactly who owns the property and how to recuperate. I mean, it's a gamble either way you go when you mow it. I mean, I'd like to be able to go over here and mow somebody's yard and get, and get paid for it. And I don't want to see tall grass sit inside my property either. I mean, you can't put a drone in the air to check the backyard because then you're getting in the Privacy Act on the neighbor. If she's laying out there half-dressed, now you're in trouble, is according to Mr. Hall. Now, if a neighbor gives us permission to use the, his fence area to climb up on the ladder and snap picture, we can do that on the back prop in the backyard. But there again, you don't know what's in there. If somebody put metal in there, there's lawn chairs. He, when you run that bush all back there, you end up tearing. You, you could tear it up. So first, you've got to send your crews in. To, Walk it. They've got to worry about getting bit, fleas, ticks, whatever in there. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but like I say, trying to recuperate what we spent is hard to do. The best way is to let them come in and take over the property. Then if they want to correct me if I'm wrong, he can give it back to us from what he told us. We don't have to accept it. Pardon? We don't have to take it. Yeah, we don't have to take it, but we can take it back after they've leveled the house if they give it back to us. We can sell the uh, parcel, and that will recuperate some of our money back. And we can also, I can't, I don't know if we can donate property as a municipality. We might have to bid it, but we can put it up for that big parcel for bid, you know, because we've had some interest of, uh, well, it's not, it was um, Habitat for Humanity, and now it's um, Fuller Center Housing at Springfield um, to take some of these parcels and build uh, Habitat houses, you know. Um, so, you know, there's options, but we don't have to take it, you know, but you got to start somewhere, I guess. But if we did maintain the property, they're going to be calling in, why aren't you doing this? And they do. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have no resolutions tonight, no committee reports, no ordinances, other business, Madison Street School discussion. I think we have any other comments on that, and we kind of covered that with Mr. Hale. So, nuisance properties. Anyone have any comments on nuisance properties? No. Uh, do you mind if I just give an update? Um, we we don't have so many workers that go out and do this. Um, next year for 2019 budget, I will be working with council and suggesting, or not suggesting, but requesting a line item in our planning and zoning department that would allow us to, um, for example, um, say someone has their whole entire house needs painted. It's chipping, it looks horrible. Well, neighbor A and neighbor B in the middle of us don't like to see it. People don't like to see that. We could technically enforce, enforce them to paint their house and fix that chipping. Or someone has gutter stuff coming, hangs, gutters hanging down. Any structural defect, we can we can enforce them to fix it. Um, the only problem with that is, is say for example, we violate a house that needs painting and they ignore our violation and it comes to the point to where we have to abate it and do the work ourselves. So they don't have any paint on the entire your house. Right now, we don't. We don't have any line item budgets for that. So what I want to suggest to council in 2019 is to have a line item for these abatements because um, the last thing we want to get into is issuing these violations, going to the abatement point, and then doing nothing because then people are not going to take the violation seriously because they know the city's not going to do anything. You know, 
And so um, the city has very honestly lacked on enforcing those specific kind of exterior property maintenance code just because we have not had the funds to do the work. And that needs to change. You know, and if we need to put twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on the line item to, to clean up the town, I will be suggesting that to council. You know, that can also be used to um, if, if there's a, a, a tax delinquent property, we can approach that homeowner or whoever's the trust of that and be like, hey, do you want to donate that to us? We can accept it. All the back taxes go away. We take ten thousand out of that pot, we demo the property ourselves, and then we either resell it to recoup our loop and get our property owners. But we have alleviated the blighted structure. And there are some blighted structures in this town. And there's not a lot, but a lot of people are coming and buying these houses and fixing them up. As I discussed at one of our council meetings, we used to average around 75 vacant houses every month. We're down to 40, 44. You know, so we are seeing this trend, but the thing has become popular. Huh? The thing has become popular. You're right, and that's exactly what's going on. But we still have those select maybe five or six houses that are beyond. It's beyond. They're structurally, as Mr. Hale had said in the meeting, they are inhabitable, period. You know, whether it be holes in the roof, whether it be structural issues with joints somewhere in that thing, they just cannot be having it. No flipper is going to take that if they're structurally in you know? But we owe it. We owe it to the citizens um, to clean up the path. It's just a matter of coming together, having a heart to heart. These things are not done for free. Um, so we're going to have to allocate some money to get that done. Properties. Thank you. Nothing. Noise ordinance potential. Mr. Cook, this is the one that you wanted to discuss. What's well, a noise ordinance? Yep. Well, primarily I think Mrs. Manham brought this to our attention some time back. Uh, I'll be honest with you. In talking with Mr. Bridge and a few other people in regard to this ordinance, I think we're going to have to tread lightly on this. And the reason I'm saying that is due to the fact that this is a complicated ordinance. You know, if we set up a certain decibel level, that decibel level is not going to be applicable for all sections of town, for all instances. So I think we're going to have to really sit down, and I think it's going to take a lot of thought and a lot of work. I understand Mrs. Manaman's point. Um, I don't know how we really address it. She's got a church. She's got neighbors. Um, this is going to be at different times of the day. You've also got other people that have, for example, it was brought to my attention, there was a home workshop where a person has a home workshop, consequently with the garage open, the door open in the summer times, saw making a lot of noise for a certain point or period of time. This is kind of a, a touchy issue. And like I say, we're going to have to think this thing out. This thing is not going to be done in a very short period of time, I don't believe. And I think, again, when you buy this meter, we were having a discussion today, you're going to have to have one for each cruiser. You're not going to have one meter because if first shift deputy leaves it in her cruiser, second shift and third shift doesn't have access. So now you've got to buy three, maybe even four meters. So we need, we need, I guess the word is kind of research this thing out and, and look at it. Uh, as far as I understand, the Sheriff's Department does not have one that we can borrow. Um, looking at the cell phone application, in talking with some people, there are different means of using a cell phone, for example, different applicators from different carriers. So consequently, your, how do I want to say this? Your means of getting that from point A to point B is going to vary. So consequently, if you go out here with one cell phone and you measure that, it may vary from another carrier. So consequently, a cell phone I don't think is going to be the answer. I think it's going to end up being the meter. 
basically I'm a little bit of a quandary of what exactly to do on this thing. Do you know how much he's, did you look and see, Mr. Larry, how much his was? Too loud, House A can get really upset about that. 
You know, I think there's right off top of the bat some things that need to be taken care of. Excessively loud noise from radios can be monitored. Excessively loud noise from speakers, amplifiers can be monitored. Excessively loud noise from instruments and stuff like that can be monitored. But you're going to have to look at this council and the citizens. How do you make it fair for everyone? Because the moment that you take someone's right away to enjoy their property, that's when the city's going to be held liable. I think there should be circumstances that says yes, this is okay, and circumstances that says no, it's not. If you go and restrict how loud people talk, I'm sorry, I think that's a far fetch. I think if you go and sit there and say, and Mr. Uh, even Mr. Graham, who stated that he lived on downtown, that's downtown 235. We're going to have a hard time restricting noises on that. You know, because by the time it's going to be a noise from a car, and by the time that is reported, that car's going to be long gone. The last thing we want to do is put laws on our books that are not enforced, unethically enforced, or unequally enforced. And I say unethically because I brought up last time, this is not something that's going to target our Hispanic families. And I don't want it to go down that route.
here at the clubs and bars and all that kind of stuff going on. We don't live over on Mill Lane. We don't live on Back Well. We're a small residential community. And there are expectations when people invest and buy property in the city. Mr. Bannon, I don't mean to be rude when I say this, but that's your expectation. Someone else's expectation may not be the same as you point here. And that's what that and that is a good point. Because that's what they need to do. They need to find where those expectations permanently exist. That's that's that that's gonna be the hard thing for those people to do, is find out what is satisfying for both ends of the equation and make that harmony exist. So but we can't sit there and see because I lived in New Carolina for 20 years and you lived in two, my rights are more important than yours. So we have to start somewhere. Oh, it does. So, so don't write a Lexus ordinance. Don't write a Cadillac ordinance. Write a Chevy ordinance Very good. That, that fulfills the sheriff's need. They told me they would love to have something more spelled out that was enforceable. They don't like the lack of Thank you. 
the city can kind of um, some for some pretty pretty potential losses. Well, I'll tell you, I'm getting pretty desperate. If you guys want to talk about losses, we can do that. Well, I, was, I told you all before, I need a serious amount of this. I need to be determined. I need to get desperate. Okay. I need to get desperate. Okay. 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 I didn't mention the word losses. 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 I didn't mention
excessive or something like that. And, and that their uh, understanding of that. So they have asked them to turn the noise down. They did, and the deputies leave and they turn it back up. And then me or somebody else calls and the deputy goes again. And sometimes the deputies have stopped um, just because they heard the noise on patrol from several blocks away. Nobody had Stat. 
should tell you who is being going after the most.
Does, right. does that make, I'm asking you, does that make sense to you? And does that make sense to you, ma'am? I, I instead, of, instead of reinventing the wheel, let's see if we can do something. You have a basis to start from, absolutely. Uh, let's see if we can do something with what we have and put some teeth into it for, so the deputies can act. Because I don't see anything where the, the deputies uh, can basically shut anything down. If it's 25 foot from the, from the building or the backyard or whatever, uh, that would, you know, if it goes, I don't know, I, I don't know the lot sizes, but 25 foot isn't that far. You know, it's like from here to that wall, and it may be not that far. So, so I think we I think we need to look at the ordinance. I think council needs to look at this ordinance and see if we can put something in this ordinance to assist the deputies, which in return would assist you and the rest of the rest of the community.
Are you still using a 7 o'clock meeting time for the next work session? Yes, most definitely. I thought you were going to have the... Uh, 6.30. 6.30, all right. Yep. But are you not going to have to change that notification? We have a notification, yeah. Uh, for the council members? No, 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 no. We, we, have, we haven't sent it out for... We already sent that one out for the appointment meeting. No, I think when Emily put the work sessions out, she did the 29th and 23rd one. Yeah, yeah so at that's... 7 p.m. Yes. Which at our meeting is at the appointment meeting wouldn't be at 7 p.m. Six thirty. Yes. For the appointment. Yes. Do we not have to make a legal notice? We are on that. I have no idea. Emily is on that. Oh, that would be a meeting. Yes, Emily's already on. Yeah, that. I mean, if it's if it's a structured meeting, like Mr. Mayor, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are, we're way ahead of you on that. There will be a legal notice to be sent. Uh, Emily hasn't got back to me, but when oh, I'm sorry, I'm me. still in the closet, but that's all right. Yeah. For the new member, yeah. So once Emily gets back to me about the time and date, if that would be appropriate. You want to go ahead and disclose when that's going to be to the council members? I don't think. Yeah, I was going to wait until Emily got back to me, but yeah, because okay. uh, I would make sure that was correct. Uh, the plan would be is the we have the meeting. I want my phone just to have the right correct dates here. Uh, the meeting would be the twentieth for for our regular council meeting. Okay. And the twenty first would be interviews because we can't do it next week because Mr. Cobb is out of town all next week. Oh. Thank you.